question five. List four indicators of a country's standard of living. And this is for four marks. The indicators, this is straight from the syllabus. So let's go through them. All right. So in order to get our four marks, we have listed straight level of consumption of goods and services. One mark. The average disposable income of the population. That's another mark. The level of national ownership of capital equipment. That's another mark. And finally, access to modern technology. Four marks with regards to indicators of a country's standard of living. Part two, list four indicators of a country's quality of life. D, extent of security enjoyed, availability of health, educational, and recreational facilities, diet and nutrition, life expectancy, and the bonus rate of infant mortality. Um, again, this is straight from the syllabus, so it is to know it. Let's get into part B. Differentiate between economic growth and economic development. So we have the difference between economic growth and economic development are one way you can think of it. Economic growth deals more with quantitative aspects of the economy, while the economic development, we're looking at qualitative aspects of the economy. So we're looking at economic development, we're looking at stuff with numbers, we're looking at GDP, we're looking at national output, we're looking at GNP, we're looking at NNP. Um, GDP stands for gross domestic production, which is how much a country produces within a given time period. So that is GDP. Uh, so that is the numbers perspective. From the economic development, we're looking at the qualitative. We're looking at standard of living, quality of life, life expectancy. We're looking at education, the literacy rate of individuals. At the same time, those do have uh, quantitative data for them. But that is more, as I say, a more qualitative aspect or qualitative perspective of how a country is doing. So let's look at the difference. All right. So they want us to differentiate between economic growth, economic uh, development for four marks. So first we will, we will go through, yeah, we'll compare each and get our four marks as such. So first we have economic growth is the increase in the national income and national output of a country while economic development is the improvement in quality of life and standard of living of a nation so this is one that's one mark so so far we have earned two marks let's go on economic growth is measured by factors such as gdp which is the gross domestic product we have gnp which is the gross national product or the NNP and NNP, which is the net national product of a nation, where economic development is measured by factors such as life expectancy, literacy rate, and mortality rates. So, boom, and boom. That is how we get our formats for this question. Notice that whenever they say differentiate, this is where we are trying to state what are the differences. So, we're comparing side by side. Right, so you see our first are compared economic growth was the difference between economic growth was the difference in economic development and with regards to their definitions and then after secondly we look at the differences between the factors that are used to measure them as b moving on to question five part c define the term human resource development Let's write it out and then discuss Nice. So, human resource development is involved with the training and development wow, of individuals. Human resource development is geared towards improving the producti productivity and efficiency of workers. That's how we get our two marks with regards to what is human resource development. Let's go straight into part D, which is our final part. Explain two ways in which the private sector could invest in human resource development for six months. All right. So, first of all, most, let's just be grateful that, like, how long I take writing out. You all didn't see. This took forever to write. 
Um, but so now let's get into uh, explaining two ways in which the private sector could invest in human resource development. The reason why, usually, if the see the question before, how they had us define human resource development. This is why we wouldn't define it within this question here because that would be redundant. And so therefore, I believe that in this one, they actually want us to explain how the private sector invests in human resources and explain it in such a way that it is worth three marks each, which will add up to the six marks. So the first one is that they could provide funding for education. All right, that's one mark there. We go into what type of funding this could be. This could be in the form of bursaries and scholarships to individuals and this will allow for the development of skills and knowledge in individuals that will lead to productivity and efficiency of workers um, because they look at the question they asked they said how could they invest and productivity and efficiency will show a returns on that investment increased productivity and efficiency uh, part the second way is funding opportunities for individuals to work abroad uh, so that will be a one mark there. The individuals, when they go abroad, what they'll be able to do, they'll be able to gain work experience, knowledge, skills, um, have a whole different experience there abroad so that when they come back, what they'll do again, they'll improve. They'll have improved efficiency and productivity, which will be signs that they are humanly resourcefully developed. And this is the end of our January Paper 2 2020 past paper. Thank you very much. I am David Roberts with the Student Hub. And you'll just take care all the best in your January exam. Please, 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 please do your best. Continue putting in the work right now. It's crunch time. Um, work done now will not be in vain. All work done now will not be in vain. So all the best for your POB exam and all the best for just all the other exams that you may have. You'll take care and God bless.